So, <coughs> there are those who say that we all believe to some extent that the Sparkle, everything Hashem does is for the good. And there are some that say, well, that's the way it is. We all have to feel that way. So let me tell you a, a beautiful, beautiful thought that I heard from Rabbi Meisha Feinstein. The shame Rabbi Meisha from <coughs> Rabbi Tendler. Rabbi Meisha Rabbi Tendler is a rabbi in town here. He's a son-in-law of, of, of uh, Rabbi Meisha. And I mentioned it to the children on their level, obviously. But I, I think there's such a profound message. Rabbi Meisha was paying a shiva call here in Muncie. Rabbi Meisha Zetzal. Rabbi Feinstein was a, a, a great uh, a Torah scholar. And he was paying his shiva call. And he asked the, the Avelim, he said, you know, we, we make, when, when someone dies, we make a bracha, dayan ha'emes. Dayan ha'emes, that God is a just judge. That, that the judgment that was placed on this person is, is, is fair. A sad bracha, we accept God's, we accept uh, uh, God's, the, the, the din, the harshness of the decree, we accept. When good news comes, we're supposed to say, Hatar v'ametif, you make a bracha, thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu for the good news. So Rav Moshe said, if that's the case, we're obligated to believe that everything God does is for the good. So how could we make a Dayan emis, which is a bracha that says, this is terrible. If we're really people of faith, we should say, Baruch at a funeral. God, you did something good. I don't understand it, but it's good, because that's what I have to believe. Rabbi Moshe said something so profound, so simple and so profound. He said that our Chachamim, our, our sages, in their great wisdom, gave us permission to understand that this is what I'm supposed to think, but this is the way I feel. They gave us license. Our great Talmud Chachamim gave us license. They said it's okay to understand here in my mind that somehow I have to believe that everything <coughs> God does is for good. But it hurts and I don't feel that way now. And I feel like throwing furniture over it and, and, and expressing my pain that I have. So Rav Moshe says it's okay. It's built into our halacha, it's built into our Jewish theology that we're, it's okay to understand that that's not the way we feel. And I think it's important to understand that there are things in life that are taken. The Gemara, we have in the Gemara, they have in the Gemara, the Talmud comes to a discussion back and forth and generally it's resolved and every once in a while they say taken, which means uh, go to further booth review. Right? That we're not gonna we're not gonna figure this one out until 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 Mashiach comes. This is something that we humans won't be able to get our hands around. <coughs> and I think it's important to come to terms with this, especially I'm I'm honestly I'm humbled. I'm, I'm humbled to be in your presence. I really mean this. I really, really mean it. I don't know. I don't know if the prayers that we say and the learning that we do and the chesed that we do, we all hope that we do, that our actions are, are, are proper and appropriate and for the right reasons. I'm not sure about if the prayers that we say, that I say, or the learning that I do is in order. What you guys do is amazing, it's inspiring, it's beautiful. And I guess it's okay to have a teku. It's okay to have a question that, that why, why terrible things happen. And, and uh, so I asked the children, I allowed the children to ask questions. And one of the kids says, hey Rebbe, if, if Hashem does these things, like how could we believe in God? If God does some stuff, we don't understand that it hurts us. So I told them, I, and I encourage the children, I think it's important that children and adults, and you should reach out to talk. If they want to talk, like Dr. Schechter said, 
if you want to talk it over with someone, whether it's an issue of theology, whether it's just an issue of pain, whether it's an issue of frustration, whatever it is, you, you, you're also children. I'm <laughs> also a child. The child in us needs, needs, needs reassurance. The child in us needs to calibrate our thinking. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with having questions. There's nothing wrong with needing a shoulder. The greatest, the, the wisest of all men, King Solomon, the Shlom HaMelech says, Two are better than one. She'em yipailu, if they fall, ba'echad yakim is kaveira. If they fall, one person can help another one, but if one falls alone, who's going to help him? The interesting point about the Pasuk, about that verse, is that it says it in plural. She'im yipailu, if they fall. You would think it would say, two are better than one. If one guy falls, the other guy gives him a boost. <coughs> it's not what he's saying. He's saying even if you're in a situation where everyone has fallen, there's a comfort in, in being able to lift each other up. So I told the kids, and I'm telling you, that it, faith by its very nature <clears throat> requires the leap of faith at some point in time. You can understand things a certain way. I gave them an analogy of, of D dating my wife 34 years ago. I wasn't 100% sure she was right for me. That's what I told the kids. <laughs> I erased the recording afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, those of you know, Baruch Hashem, I was very, Hashem was kind to me. A very really wonderful woman. I said, I told the kids, I said, you know, how do you, how does, nobody can be 100% sure when they walk to the chuppah that their spouse is right for them. How do you know that that's the case? So what do you do? You date, and at the beginning you say, I'm 2%, and then it's 5 and 10, and you're compatible, and you, you, you share the same interests, and that number starts to rise, and it goes to 70 and 80. So if you're impulsive, maybe 60% is enough for you. If you're more cautious, you wait for 95%. Nobody's 100% sure. That last little bit is a leap of faith. And you say things seem to be in order, and things, that, that little bit will have to jump together. I think in our relationship with God, to have an honest and trustful and open relationship with God requires that leap of faith and that to understand that it's okay not to understand. And like our Maisha said, it's okay to be upset and it's okay to a vibrant relationship means that you're upset at times. <clears throat> you have a dead relationship with someone if, 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 if everything is always in order. So I, I offer you my comfort. Um, Continue to give each other strength. Continue to do your holy work, um, and understand that that you are giving an incredible message that every person matters, that every person makes a difference, that we care for each other, that that if one of us hurts, all of us are hurting. It's such a powerful message. I, I'm going to, if I may, two three minutes, and I'll and I'll end. I do a lot of work, Tzvi and I, and perhaps many of you, we do our best to comfort victims of abuse. And a thought came to me a few weeks ago. I'd like to share it with you, and I think it really fits into this so well. And I encourage you to look up the text if you have a moment. Not now, after you've slept a little bit. Maybe if Chazar Sashat's one of these days, or when the rabbi's speaking on Shabbos, or when I'm speaking, if you're on now. Hashem tells Avram, right before he turns off the stone, Hashem says, Can I hide from Abraham? I'm about to destroy the Sodom and Gomorrah. So and and uh, he says, i got to tell Avram. I encourage you to look at the Pesukim inside and look at how our Rishonim, our sages, try to explain the Pesukim. They're really hard to, to understand what's really going on. He says, Am I going to hide from Avram what I'm about to do? Avram Haya Yili Gadot, he's going to be a great nation and everybody's going to bench him and I love him and he's going to tell his kids after him to bed them and their children to do Tzadok or Mishpat. Look it up inside. All the Rishonim say like, well, Zecha Tzadik Levarcha. Since we mention Avram, we say nice things about him. We mention Avram 50 other times. It, it, it almost seems, Chas I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, Chas I'll tell you what I think in a moment. It almost seems like just rambling. In fact, it's interesting, if you look at the next Pasuk, 
Hashem tells Avram, I hear the cries of Stein Vamira. Rashi says, Vayom and Hashem, El Avram, Rashi says. Okay, back to regular discussions. What was going on? I'll tell you what I think. Every organization, in my opinion, every movement, or most, the vast majority of movements, start out with wonderful, noble ideas. Very few people get up in the morning and say, I'm going to start an organization that's going to make people's lives miserable. Communism was a fantastic idea. You had a couple of guys, they owned villages, and everybody was, was under them, and they said, hey, that's a lot, let's share. Unions were beautiful ideas. What happens? Over the passage of time, corruption sets in. And there's some nepotism, and people go in, there in leadership positions who really don't belong there, and the organization starts to lose its soul. This is my understanding of what the plastic is saying. Feel free to disagree, it's only my thoughts. I'm married, I'm used to being disagreed with, it's fine. So, let me tell you what I think he was saying. <coughs> Sudan lost their way. I, so they lost their way. They wound up torturing a young girl because she gave food to guests. I think those rules probably also started. They probably said, you know, why should people have to come to individual homes? Let's make a beautiful place for them. That's what I think happened. I have no proof, but that's what I think happened. It probably started out as a nice idea, and they had this nice place for guests, and too many guests were coming, and they closed it down, and the old rules say that nobody could go. That's what I think happened. But when Hashem looked down and said that this city gathered together and crushed an individual child, Hashem said, it's over. That's it. It's over. We have to destroy it. The city has to be wiped out. We have to start again. Because they, they lost their way. I'd like to tell you, here's my thought. Avram Avino at the time was a startup nation. He was the only one. He was idealistic. He was at the beginning. He was starting out. Hashem told him, this is Hamachasa, I need Avram Asher, I said, could I cover up from Avram Avinu what I'm about to do? Avram's going to be a great nation. He's also going to have, eventually, bureaucracy and big, lots of people and, and infrastructure and things. <clears throat> Avram Avinu, I have to warn him. Lamana Sheyitzava, look at the Pasuk with this insight. He should tell his children and his children's children, <coughs> it's about nothing else. And you see, this is what Anavim keeps saying. I want a VM keep reminding us it's not about carbonus and it's not about trappings, it's all about kindness and caring and compassion. I think that's what he was saying. Because he was telling Avram Avinu. And I think that your organization stays to its mission. And you yell out with every action of yours, with, with every every step that you take with your with your wet boots and stepping in the mud and, and, and not sleeping properly and, and going without food, you're making a statement. You're making a statement that every human being matters, every person in our community matters. Not the way it was in Saddam, that the city, the organization mattered and the little kids didn't. <clears throat> so, I think you're, you're, you're refreshing our own faith in humanity, our faith in our beautiful religion. From the bottom of my heart, HaKadosh Baruch Hu should bench you, each of you, with Hatzlach in your work, with good emotional health and physical health. You should have nachas from your own. Is Yaakov Horowitz at Gmail.